Good evening, everyone. Hope you're having a wonderful Friday. Um, God is good. We never get these days back. So um, that's one of the challenges is, is to be fully present. Fully present right here, right now, and praising God for every breath. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So let's do that tonight. Let's get focused through the power of the Holy Spirit, and uh, let's get into God's Word. Tonight's message is entitled, Daily Distractions in Our Faith Journey. Uh, last night was about receiving Christ and the reasons to accept Him um, and uh, to place our faith fully in Him. And then He just he fulfill, fulfills our deepest needs, our deepest heart desires. Uh, the peace, the love, the strength, the wisdom, learning how to respond instead of reacting. And uh, tonight, we're going to talk about, okay, once you have accepted Christ into your heart, there's still so many distractions. I mean, there are the ordinary distractions of maybe the bad habits that we've developed. Um, there are the worldly distractions that are just all around us. And then, of course, Satan's going to be messing with us now. Uh, because he doesn't want us to become uh, fully alive in Christ. He doesn't want us to become the people God created us to be. He can't take our, our uh, salvation from us, but he can take our ministry and our peace. So Satan's going to be messing with us, and we just need to know that uh, and ask for God's help. So let's do that right now. Father, we thank you for this time together. Lord, we thank you for this technology. I mean, how awesome. What a gift it is that we can be all around the world and uh, open up our Bibles and, and join together in this study. So thank you, Father, for this time. And now just bless each of us with your Holy Spirit. Help us to set aside any distractions and listen and learn. Father, help us to become more and more like Jesus, in whose beautiful name we pray. Amen. Amen. So a scripture, Proverbs chapter 4, verses 25 and 26. Let your eyes look directly forward, and your gaze be straight before you. Ponder the path of your feet, then all your ways will be sure. So stay focused. Uh, don't head off one way or the other. And... Um, you know, I don't know how many of you have done this, um, or how often you've done this. I've done this quite a bit, and that is making a wrong turn, getting off of the wrong exit. And uh, we want to discover that we made a wrong turn as quickly as possible. Not a hundred miles down the road where now we've got to turn around and come back a hundred miles. So, everybody makes wrong turns from time to time. Everyone gets distracted. But with God's help, He shows it to us immediately and gets us back on track. So, um, again, daily distractions, they're just part of life. Once we accept Jesus, it doesn't mean that the distractions are going to leave. Actually, that becomes the greatest obstacle for our new life in Christ, are the distractions. Squirrel! Where was I? What were we talking about? See what I mean? And given all the technology, right, the technology at our fingertips, there is little doubt the temptations for distraction are greater than ever, ever before. And given our current situation with the coronavirus fears, the economic anxieties, um, even wondering what this is all going to look like when the crisis passes, those are a lot of distractions. Those are a lot of things that can... Take our eyes off Jesus. Big distractions, small distractions, everything in between. But of course, like Peter, as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he was walking on water, even while the storm was raging. But as soon as he started to look at the waves and pay attention to the wind, when he took his eyes off Jesus, he began to sink. And that's the case for all of us. So what are some principles... What are some biblical principles to help us keep our eyes on Jesus and then quickly return our eyes to Him once we lose focus? Because we all lose focus. Okay? 
How can we get our eyes back to Jesus as quickly as possible? Open your Bibles to Psalm 23. <clears throat> and uh, obviously this is, this is you know, the most familiar psalm and, and maybe the most familiar scripture in all the Bible. Um, I mean, you can, you can tell friends that you have memorized an entire chapter in the Bible. Um, you could probably quote it right now from Psalm 23. All right? And if you don't quite have it, it wouldn't take you long to get it. The six verses of the 23rd Psalm. But tonight we're just going to look at the first three. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So just those three verses. It starts with, the Lord is my shepherd. That's very personal. That relationship with Jesus, that he is my shepherd. And it also defines the relationship. He's the shepherd, and I'm just a sheep. Like we said yesterday, he is calling us to follow him. I mean, how many sheep do you see with ulcers? How many pack sheep do you see? That's no, sheep just... I grew up on a ranch. We had sheep. They're not the smartest animals in the world. You know, they tend to stay together, but every once in a while, someone will wander off and get lost, and then you have to go find them. But the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want... See, not only does he meet our deepest needs, but he quiets our wants, too. There's contentment. He makes me lie down in green pastures. I wonder how shepherds do that. So I say, when I was a kid, we'd have dogs and things and try to make them to lie down, and they just kind of locked their legs, and it was very hard. I mean, how do shepherds make the sheep lie down? But that's what the Bible says. He makes me lie down in green pastures. So this peace is so important to him that there are times when he's just going to say, you need to just quiet down, settle, and be at peace. He makes me lie down. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. So the first thing, learning to quiet our minds and bodies is very important. Very important. Learn how to be quiet. Learn how to just turn everything off. I've learned uh, by the grace of God, and I'll just tell you what, some of the things I do. I'm not telling you, you what to do, but this is what, what I do. Um, most of the time when I drive now, there's no radio, there's no music. Everything is turned off. It's just quiet. It's amazing how our minds can work when they're quiet. And it's amazing how hard it is to work when there's a lot of distractions, a lot of noise. So get used to being at peace and allowing your mind to be quiet. Number two, invite the Holy Spirit to restructure your routine around godly habits. It really is about learning some new habits, some godly habits, and to kind of put aside those things that God doesn't want for you right now. And you know, there have been a, a lot of things that God has shown me that I just need to set aside. Um, I used to golf every week, and that just wasn't God's will for me. Maybe it will again in the future, but for me, it was becoming, um, on my day off, a, a sense of aggravation, and it was stealing my joy and my peace. And God's like, this is not how I want you to spend your day off. Um, some of the other things, I... I used to be a huge sports fan. Now, I tape it. I DVR it. And if my team wins, I'll watch it as much as I want. I'm not really that into it anymore. If they lose, I've saved all that time. I just delete it. Amen. There were a lot of movies that we had that we just got rid of. Because it wasn't edifying to our souls, to our minds. It wasn't good for us. Okay. So pray about it and seek God's will, those godly habits, and he will show you. And then, once these become new habits, once they become part of your routine, then, you know, old habits are hard to break. Good, good. 
And there's no better time than today to start developing those. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Number three, the, uh, when the distractions come and you get off course, uh, learn to laugh at yourself. Laughter is a great gift. There's no condemnation in Christ, so we don't take ourselves as seriously as we used to. There I go again, getting all angry about politics or, you know, wanting to get in an argument with my neighbor, whatever it may be. Lord, <laughs> please help me to just be at peace, to relax. Learn to laugh at yourself. It's a great gift when we don't take ourselves so seriously. It's all grace, right? God loves us with all of his heart. It's grace after grace after grace. And number four, and this is what I want to end with and really kind of focus on, and that is, since the Holy Spirit now is with us, through um, once you accept Jesus into your life, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us, and the Holy Spirit actually helps us and guides us. I heard one of the guys in a Bible study a couple of weeks ago, he said it's, it's like a, a turbocharged, supercharged, jetpack, whatever you want to say, conscience. It's like the Holy Spirit now is showing me things and correcting my behavior and my thoughts much earlier than I ever knew before. The Holy Spirit is guiding us. How does He do it? He takes our peace and joy. As soon as we start getting off and we're really sensitive to the Holy Spirit and you can grow in this, you can sense when the Holy Spirit is taking His blessing from you. The glory of God is kind of being removed from you. And it's like, what, what just happened, Lord? What just happened? Help me get back on track. Help me get back into your glory so I can have that joy and that peace. And probably um, the person who has most inspired me in this way, um, her name is Bil Bilkis Sheik. And um, she, was, she lived in Pakistan. Uh, she was the daughter of a military leader there came out of the Muslim tradition, and um, she came to faith in Jesus Christ, and he, uh, I mean, he did a mighty work in her, but she learned how to, um, and I had this saved, but now it's gone, let me see if I can bring it back up, she had um, just an immense ability to sense the Lord's leading in her life. Okay, here it is. And the, um, the name of her book, and I highly recommend it, highly recommend it. The name of her book is I Dared to Call Him Father. I Dared to Call Him Father. And last name, Sheik, S-H-E-I-K-H. All right? So once she accepted Christ, and she lived in this, in this huge mansion, but once the words started getting out, you know, there were some pretty militant people in her family. And some of her Christian friends started to be concerned about her safety. And so, um, I'll, I'll just pick it up. There's uh, just a couple pages here I want to read to you. Are you being extra careful? Marie asked. Well, I laughed. There's not much I can do. If someone wants to harm me, I'm sure he'll find a way. Ken looked around the drawing room and out the large glass doors into the garden. You really don't have much protection here, he said. I hadn't quite realized how vulnerable you really are. How about your bedroom? Everyone felt it wise to look over my room, so we all trooped in. Ken was particularly concerned by the windows looking out on the garden. She had a huge, beautiful garden. They were only protected by a glass pane and a wire screen. He shook his head and said, it really isn't safe, Bilkis. You should do something about it. Have some kind of heavy metal grill installed. Anyone could get through this. I said I would see to it the next day. Was it my imagination, or did his glory fade just a little as I made that promise? Eventually we said goodbye, and I retired happier than I had been in a long time. She had been really lonely, and then her friends came over to cheer her up. The next day, however, as I was about to send for an iron worker, I was once again aware of the quickly receding glory of the Lord. Why? Was it because I was about to take an action that was based on fear? 
It certainly did seem that every time I started to call the iron worker, my action was stopped. And then I realized why. When word got around the village that I was having my window barred, everyone would realize that I was fearful. I could just hear the gossip, ha, what kind of religion is Christianity anyway? When you become a Christian, you become fearful? No. I decided I would not have that window barred. That night, I went to bed confident that I had made the right decision. I fell asleep at once, but suddenly I was wakened by a sound. I sat up, startled, but without fear. Before me appeared a breathtaking sight. Through the closed and draped windows of my room, in a supernatural way, I could see my whole garden. It was flooded with a heavenly white light. I could see every rose petal, every tree leaf, every blade of grass, every thorn. And over the garden hung a calm serenity. In my heart, I heard my father saying, You did the right thing, Gokas. I am with you. Slowly, the light faded, and the room was dark again. I switched on my bedside lamp, lifted my arms, and praised God. Oh, Father, how can I thank you enough? You have so much concern for each of us. Yes, Lord. Ask the Spirit to make you highly sensitive to His guidance. One of the prayers that I lift up is, Lord, if I am ever outside of your will, Take my peace and joy immediately. Immediately. If I've made a wrong turn, if I'm doing something you don't want me to do, remove, all, remove your glory from me so I immediately realize it and come back to you. Because as I say, there are distractions all around us, all the time. But with God's help and with the leading of the Holy Spirit, we'll learn to quiet down, restructure our lives with more godly practices that help us become more and more sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. We'll learn how to laugh at ourselves and just wait and see. The Holy Spirit will guide you and you will begin to sense the Spirit's leading like never before. And that's the essential part of the adventure, the journey following Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us your Holy Spirit that we are not alone. Lord, help us to understand that distraction is just part of our journey now. That this is not unusual, and you're not upset with us how easily distracted we are. But Lord, help us to, to grow in the Holy Spirit power and leading every day of our lives. Help us to learn to quiet down and listen, to be still, so your Spirit can speak to us, so you can restore our souls. Because, Lord, there are so many people in this world who have no idea about true peace, the peace that only you can give. So fill us with that peace. Fill us with your Spirit. And, Father, lead the way. We love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, everyone, for being with me. Hope you have a great weekend. Uh, 10 a.m. on Sunday morning, we'll be having uh, the worship service. And uh, I, I hope that will be a blessing for you as well. But like I say, use this time, draw closer to God than ever before, and let Him uh, just fill you with His love. God bless.